Good afternoon. Please be seated. My name is Ira Wagner, and I am the chair of the Board of Trustees for Southern Vermont College. And I have the distinct pleasure of officially opening the college's 91st commencement ceremony. A very warm welcome to all of you, families, friends, special guests, and may I offer the first of what will be many congratulations to the individuals we are celebrating today, our graduates. I would like to begin by introducing you to my colleagues on the board, the senior leadership of the college, and our distinguished guest. Members of the platform party, please stand when I call your name and remain standing. And audience, please hold your applause until all have been named. Other Board of Trustees members in attendance today include Carol Conroy, Toby Potterton, Marjorie Gregg Swain, and Dr. David Reese Evans, President of the College. Also seated on the platform are Jennifer Maxey, Vice President for Administration and Finance, Nina Moser, Vice President for College Advancement, Daniel Summers, Vice President for Enrollment Management, Dr. Jennifer Berg, Dean of the Faculty, Heather Choir, Dean of Students, Kimberly Gould, Dean of Academic Operations, Sharif Hashim, Director of Athletics, Alan Hatton, Registrar. And our special honored guest today, honorary degree recipient and commencement speaker, Nicholas Pinchuk. Thank you, please be seated. Seated to my left, are the faculty and staff of the college. In the front row are the faculty chairs who guide each of the five academic div divisions. As I call your name, will you please stand? Dr. Jennifer Nelson, chair of the John Merck Division of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Dr. Daisy Levy, chair of the Hunter Division of the Humanities. Dr. Stacy Hills, chair of the McCormick Division of Business. Dr. Mary Botter, Chair of the Division of Nursing, and Dr. Judith Hertzberg, Chair of the Donald Everett Axon Division of Social Sciences. Please give a special round of applause. <laughs> Graduates, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I congratulate all of you for what you have accomplished. Whether you are earning a diploma or a certificate for learning today, you have increased your economic prospects in life considerably. I graduated from Southern Vermont College in 1983 with a business degree, and so I'm a business numbers kind of person, and I was recently reading economic research from the Federal Reserve Board that shows that U.S. workers, for all U.S. workers, the benefits of college in terms of higher earnings far outweigh the total cost of earning a degree. So when I graduated from Southern Vermont College in 1983, I was 31 years old. I had dropped out of college 10 years earlier, and I was working during the day, and I went to school at night and got my degree here. And then I went on to earn an MBA, which paved the way for me to achieve way beyond my wildest dreams. And my degree from SVC, to borrow the words of the local Vermont poet Robert Frost, made all the difference. And I've learned along the way that I can also make a difference. So at previous commencements, I have talked about some prominent philanthropists uh, who really made a big difference in the world, whose names are not household names. So last year, I talked about Julius Rosenwald, who supported the building of over 5,000 schools in the American South for African Americans between 1915 and 1935. Uh, he was the driving force behind the success of Sears Roebuck, and he really made a difference in the world. And uh, the other person I mentioned a year ago, I'm going to mention again, is a 
a fellow by the name of Henry Rowan. He was an engineer who went to MIT, and he built a significant business in New Jersey. And uh, but when the local college, Glassboro State College, came around asking him to help them, he said, okay, I'll do that. And he, he gave the first $100 million gift to a college, and it was to Glassboro State College in order to build an engineering school. And because of his generous gift, that college has now blossomed. Uh, they renamed it Rowan University, not because Mr. Rowan asked for that, but because the college insisted on it. And when he was asked why he gave his money to Glassboro State College, he said, because I enjoy making a difference in the world. So setting a goal of making a difference gave Mr. Rosenwald and Mr. Rowan and continues to give me great satisfaction as I hope it will do for you as you move forward in your lives and careers. So there's a saying that, that's generally attributable to Winston Churchill and uh, it goes like this. Uh, you make a living by getting, but you make a life by giving. And I think that saying is, exemplifies exactly what I'm talking about with regard to Julius Rosenwald and Henry Rowe and, and many people. So graduates, I very much applaud your worthwhile investment in college and your hard work and accomplishment to get to this day. I wish you all the success in the world. As you go out in the world, remember how SVC made a difference in your life. In the years ahead, we are confident that all of you will find the time to make a difference in the world. Now, without further ado, let us enjoy the music of Professor Eric Despard, Director of Music at SVC, and then we will hear remarks from our President, David Evans. Thank you.
Thank you, Chair Wagner, and thank you, Eric, for that lovely, lovely tune. Um, thank you all. Congratulations to our graduates, and welcome to families, friends, relatives, many other people. A warm welcome to all of you, and it is always wonderful to see so many families, friends, staff, and students, and alumni here to honor our graduates. The joy and energy of this day make it a favorite of everyone who works at Southern Vermont College. It is a genuine pleasure, it really is, this is the best day of the year, it is a genuine pleasure to share in the accomplishments of the graduates we celebrate today. Every time any of us picks up a newspaper, and I wonder if any of you actually still do that, um, logs onto a news site, which I suspect is a little more popular, opens our Twitter feed, which is probably yet more popular, or turns on the TV, we are confronted by the fact that the world is changing at incredible speed. Old certainties and social structures have changed beyond recognition within the lifetimes of you graduates, and even more so for those of us who are older. To many people all over the world, these changes are bewildering and scary, calling into question as they do long-held beliefs and perhaps undermining the social and economic structures in which they have lived their lives. Four centuries ago, my favorite poet, John Donne, was contemplating the early phases of what we now call the scientific revolution when he wrote the lines, and new philosophy calls all in doubt, the element of fire is quite put out, the sun is lost and the earth, and no man's wit can well direct him where to look for it. Dunn was thinking of the collapse of the belief in the ancient system that construed the universe as consisting of only the four elements of earth, air, fire, and water, but he might well be thinking of a variety of changes going on today as well. Just as one example, the iPhone I have silenced in my pocket right now has more computing power than the rocket that landed the first people on the moon on July 20th, 1969, less than 50 years ago. Speaking of cell phones, I wonder if there are many graduates today who have literally never used a landline. If there aren't now, there will be in the next few years. Think about this too. The internet, in anything like the form we know it today, is just barely 25 years old, and yet for many of us, it has quite literally changed everything. Similarly, we may be on, our, uh, on the verge of driverless cars. We were talking about this last night, actually, with Mr. Pinchuk. Um, similarly, we may be on the verge of driverless cars and trucks, which will potentially bring incredible new convenience, but will probably also cause immense job losses and economic dislocation, as well as tremendous new possibilities. It is into this context of rapid and sometimes disorienting change that we send you. But what John Dunn's lines show, too, is that anxiety about fast and unsettling change is not exactly new in Western culture. While it is arguably true that the pace of change now is faster than it has been in times past, it is also true that, quote, everything changes and nothing stands still, a quotation more often paraphrased as, there is nothing more constant than change, and first attributed to the Greek philosopher Heraclitus in around 500 BC, 2,600 years ago. Um, the fact that the aphorism itself is over 25 centuries old suggests that we might also borrow a quotation from the book of Ecclesiastes that there is nothing new under the sun or under the clouds. Still, of course, all of us live in our own time and with our own challenges and our own anxieties, and this seems to be a particularly challenging and anxious time. Our goal in our work with you, construed most broadly, has been to equip you to deal with these challenges and thereby keep your anxiety to a minimum we hope. Over your time at SVC, you have shown resiliency, the ability to face disappointment, frustration, and other obstacles, and to work through or around them. Certainly, many of you have overcome serious challenges to get here today, and equally certainly, pretty much all of you will face such challenges in the days and years ahead. But you should feel confident that you have what it takes to work your way through those challenges. You can build on your experiences so far, you can take comfort in your successes, and you can learn lessons from your failures. This confidence will serve you well, particularly when it is coupled with the humility and self-knowledge that will enable you to ask for help when you need it, and to build a team of friends, family, and supporters around you that makes the whole greater than the parts individually. 
Each year in the fall, we welcome our new students by assuring them that we believe in them and their potential to succeed here at SVC and in the world beyond the college. Our efforts at the college are entirely directed towards working with them, working with you, to put that belief into action. Your presence here today testifies that our teamwork with you has been a success. We are proud of you, and you should be proud of yourselves. This is a day of joy, a rite of passage that marks your very significant achievement and a milestone from which you should draw, draw great strength. You have done good work. You will do more good work. We are counting on you. Enjoy your special day, be safe, and my personal congratulations to you all. I am immensely proud of you. Thank you for doing your good work with us. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the first of two student speakers. Each year, a committee of faculty and staff select a student speaker to address the graduating class. Student commencement speakers must meet certain criteria, including completion of all degree requirements. They must earn at least one half of all their credits at Southern Vermont College, and they must have achieved a certain minimum grade point average. This year, the committee fielded many promising submissions and ended up selecting two speakers who represented different experiences at SVC. That so many graduates wanted the opportunity to speak at their commencement is humbling to me. Each of the two selected said that they were compelled by the opportunity to express their great gratitude for what the SVC community has done for them, for the people who supported and inspired them, and helped them become the learners and leaders they are today. We are grateful for having had this uniquely SVC experience, too. Our first speaker is history and politics major from North Bennington, Vermont, and this year's valedictorian as well, uh, Queenie Lyka Garrison. Please join me in welcoming Queenie. To begin, I would like to thank our respected guests, the SVC faculty and staff, students, parents, and the audience for joining us here today. Additionally, President Evans, I'd like to thank you for your leadership, support, and easily approachable nature. Finally, I would like to give special thanks to my advisor and professor, Dr. Redden, who helped guide, support, and involved me throughout my SVC experience. To my fellow graduates, I hope you will enjoy this day, as this is a huge accomplishment for all of us. No matter where our life journey takes us, it is my wish that we do not forget our experiences here at Southern Vermont College, nestled in the beautiful Vermont mountains. For the last two years, Southern Vermont College has become almost like a second home to be. Despite our political climate today, SVC has kept its mission to embrace diversity and to treat everyone equally. Whatever your race, gender, political views, religion, or upbringing. Having grown up in the Philippines and recently become a United States citizen, I have felt accepted by the faculty and students here at SVC. The supportive family atmosphere on campus helps students from different backgrounds feel at home encouraging them towards a successful college experience that has lifelong implications. SVC has allowed me not only to be flexible, but it has also reinforced my understanding and drive to be an outstanding student, particularly when working with the staff at the Center for Teaching and Learning. While it is hard to think that after today, I will be leaving my second home at Southern Vermont College, I know that the academic foundation and kindness I have received here has enhanced me as an individual and with my future interpersonal relationships. My college experience, while academically demanding, has often forced me out of my comfort zone. It has also encouraged me to take risks and grow as a more confident person. Five years ago, I would never have imagined that I would be capable of getting an undergraduate degree here in the United States. Even more shocking for me is that I'm speaking in front of all of you. 
My father adopted me from the Philippines and brought me here to this country. I did not know how to speak or write in English. The language barrier has brought so much frustration and disappointment to me that it came to a point that I was ready to give up my education completely. However, my father kept encouraging me and continued to believe in my abilities to succeed. He became my English and writing teacher day in and day out, my private psychologist and my cheerleader. I hope that all graduates today have a person or family member who have been there for us during the challenges and disappointments throughout our college years. I hope that we do not forget to thank them for their endless support, encouragement, and motivation. Hence, I dedicate my academic accomplishment to my father. Dad, you are an inspiration to me. Your kindness and loving nature showed me what America is really about. Well, others would... Thank you. <laughs> While others would turn their back on immigrants and refugees, you did not. Instead, you saw a child who deserves a quality education and a brighter future. Thank you for being a father when you did not have to be. I will always be grateful for the opportunity you have given me to achieve my American dream. Thank you. tough act to follow. <clears throat> Thank you, Queenie. Whew. Good afternoon. My name is Professor Davey, Daisy Levy, and it is my great pleasure to be with you all on this special occasion. Today, four students who have completed SVC's Shires Press publishing program are graduating. Over the course of a four-semester curriculum, years of thinking and writing, Months of revision and more than one sleepless night, they have created their own manuscripts, learned about the publishing process with guidance from their SVC professors and the Northshire Bookstore. It is, uh, it's been inspiring, as I am now saying over and over again, to see their progress through this unique program and to see their finished products come to life. Their novels are now published and available on the shelf and online. I'm sure they would love it if you would pick up a copy. They have worked incredibly hard to accomplish this goal and we are deeply impressed by and proud of them. In honor of achieving this milestone, I ask the following students to rise and please come forward. Cheyenne Daly, Tanisha Wright, <laughs> Benjamin Wormfeld, <laughs> and Michaela Zemitis. President Evans, would you please join us so that the students may present you with signed copies of their books. And now we will hear from our second student speaker, human services major, Charlene Mary Marte. From New York City. Thank you. Good afternoon. I want to start off by thanking God, my family, and my friends for making this journey possible for me. 
I come from Washington Heights in New York City. Coming to Vermont was a huge change for me. People move at a slower pace, and that gave me anxiety. <laughs> because I was used to 20 years of a fast-paced life. I went from never being apart from my family to having to make decisions and choices on my own. I was the type of student who learned at a slower pace than most. Barriers were created that could have discouraged me, but I chose to pass those barriers and work harder to prove a point that assumptions would not limit my ability to succeed. Before coming to college, I was told that I would not be able to excel at this level of work I would be receiving. Of course, I proved them wrong. I am very good at advocating for myself, thanks to my mom, who pushed me and always reminded me that my limit is beyond the sky. Although being at a small school has its pros and cons, the pros were that I met caring people who were willing to dedicate their time to have students succeed. I spent most of my time at the Center for Teaching and Learning, and that helped me realize that you can't succeed without asking for help. They supported me, and if I ever missed an appointment, they immediately emailed me to check in with me. I was fortunate to meet amazing faculty at this school. Although I continue to be encouraged by positive people in my life, I was mainly motivated by the people who doubted me. When I received no as an answer, that means new opportunity. To the class of 2018, I encourage you to never give up when you're rejected. One door may close, but many will open. I have appreciated my journey because if things had been easily handed to me, they wouldn't bring as much meaning. In my journey, I learned that it's okay to change majors. I thought I knew exactly what I wanted to do, but my plans changed. I remember sitting in the community-based interventions class with Dr. Herzberg, and there I figured out that I loved thinking on my feet. I enjoyed learning about nonprofit organizations and how they work. After that, I figured that I did not want to work with only individuals, I wanted to work with families and children. I started to feel like my degree should not only matter to me, I did not want my degree to just be a paper hanging on the wall collecting dust. I wanted to become a person that inspires others to keep pushing. In December, I made the decision to look at graduate schools. I wanted to try something new. I started to look at schools that I thought I would never be accepted to. On February 1st, I applied to Rutgers University School of Social Work, and on the 27th, I found out that I was accepted. <laughs> At that moment, I felt extremely proud of myself. My dream is now my reality, and pursuing my master's in social work the point of sharing my story is to encourage you to never take no for an answer. Thank you. Oh Thank you. At commencement, it is customary to acknowledge the students who have graduated with the highest grade point averages in their class, our valedictorians and salutatorians of the class of 2018. I ask the following individuals to please stand and turn and face the audience. Please remain standing while I announce each name and audience, please hold all applause until I have finished reading both names. The valedictorian, the student earning the highest academic achievement of the class of 2018, is a history and politics major from North Bennington, Vermont, Queenie Lyca Garrison.
the salutatorian, the student graduating with the next highest academic achievement of the class is a creative writing major from Bennington, Vermont, Tori Kurtzner. Please give a hearty round of applause to the 2018 Thank you. We'll now move to the presentation of the three institutional awards traditionally given at SVC commencement. Our first award, the William A. Glasser Award, is given to the bachelor's degree candidate who best exemplifies the mission of SVC as championed by Dr. William Glasser during his years as president. Nominated by faculty and staff, the award recipient must have demonstrated outstanding personal and academic growth while at the college. The 2018 recipient of this award has dedicated herself in nearly all aspects of college life since her arrival here four years ago, participating in three internships and studies abroad in Florence, Italy, just to name a few of her extracurricular acti activities. Athletically, she broke every major goalkeeping record in SVC women's soccer history. She was an NECC all-conference player all four years and the goalkeeper of the year in 2014 and 2017. Her senior season was so impressive that she ranked in the top 10 in the NCAA for save percentage. She is described by her professors and coach as remarkable, caring, confident, and quote, her personal and academic growth has been tremendous and those connected to her couldn't be more proud, unquote. Today she graduates with a bachelor's degree in business administration and sports management. Please congratulate the 2018 William A. Glasser Award recipient from Wilton, New York, Melissa Noel Mascari. The Edward H. Everett Award acknowledges a graduating student who has made numerous contributions to the Southern Vermont College community. The recipient personifies a spirit of giving, a willingness to work hard, and dedication, all qualities attributed to Edward Everett, the original owner of the Everett Estate. The 2018 recipient of this award exemplifies all of these qualities. As one of her nominators said, she has consistently shown an unwavering dedication to Southern Vermont College, excelling academically while going beyond the expectations of any student in the service of the college community. Most notably and admirably, she demonstrated leadership as the Student Government Association president this year, where she worked tirelessly to improve student involvement and engagement in this role. She has also participated in the Habitat for Humanity, during alternative spring break in 2017, exemplifying her drive as a community-oriented individual. She is one of the founding members of SVC's online school paper, The Looking Glass. Her attention to detail and creativity put the publication on its firm footing. Please congratulate the recipient of the 2018 Edward Everett Award from Newark, Delaware, Bridget Kane. The Linda Curry Memorial Award is given in memory of a former faculty member in the Hunter Division of the Humanities. Curry was a first generation college student and while teaching at SVC was devoted to fulfilling the college's mission to help each student realize his or her full potential. This year's recipient of the Linda Curry Award was told that she would never make it through college. She has a learning disability that affects her cognitive processing. 
What others can read once, she has to read three and four times in order to process the information. With remarkable dedication, many times she declined to go to the movies or to events on campus with her peers. Instead, she stayed behind to master course material by studying. Throughout her four years at SVC, she has consistently attended the academic support of the Center for Teaching and Learning. By practicing the learning strategies taught to her and heavy use of note-taking techniques, she has done very well. Recently, she was accepted to Rutgers University to the master's program in social work. She is a determined, compassionate, hardworking woman. She has overcome many obstacles to be here today, and she has so much potential. Please congratulate the 2018 Linda Curry Award recipient from New York City, Charlene Mar Mary Marte. Wow, Charlene. Let's congratulate all of the award winners and thank our two speakers again. You know, I gotta say, this, these things are why we're here and uh, what we live for. Bestowing an honorary degree is way an institution honors individuals who have contributed in a significant way to the a field of study or to society at large. The Latin phrase for an honorary degree is honoris causa, which means for the sake of honor. Makes sense, right? The honorary doctorate is the highest honor an academic institution can bestow. Today we will award the honorary doctorate of humane letters, honoris causa, to a gentleman who has dedicated himself both personally and professionally to making a difference in student access to technology and education. Here from Snap-on today, it's my pleasure to introduce Chairman and CEO, Nick Pinchuk. Nick has had an exemplary career serving his country, his company, and the American workforce. Nick received his MBA from Harvard and his master's and bachelor's in, of science degrees in engineering from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. He served our country in Vietnam as an officer in the United States Army. Nick has been chairman of Snap-on since 2009 and CEO since 2007. Prior to joining Snap-on, Nick was president, Global Refrigeration Operations, a multi-billion dollar business unit of Carrier Corporation and a subsidiary of United Technologies Corporation. Before then, he was with the Ford Motor Company where he held various financial and engineering positions. Nick has been recognized by a number of organizations for his leadership in education and workforce development. For example, in 2012, Skills USA named him Champion of the Year, identifying his extensive support for the growth of a skilled American workforce. In 2014, he was inducted into the Industry Week's Manufacturing Hall of Fame. Nick continues to be an outspoken leader on workforce development, and we are pleased to have him here with us today. In our commencement program, you can read a bit more about his numerous accomplishments and the boards he serves on. There is much more to this remarkable person's life than we could possibly fit on a page. For his outstanding career accomplishments, his many contributions in both technology and education, and for his dedication to higher education in general, we are so pleased to grant Nicholas T. Pinchuk the Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. May I ask Ira Wagner and Nina Moser for their assistance, please? I now welcome to join us for the conferring of an honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Nicholas T. Pinchuk. <laughs> not quite, not quite. Ch Chair Wagner. Distinguished guests, friends of the college, students, family, and friends, it gives me great honor and pleasure to present Dr. Nicholas T. Pinchuk, Doctor of Humane Letters. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Southern Vermont College, 
I hereby confer upon you the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Dr. Nicholas T. Pinchuk will now address the SVC Class of 2018. Well, uh, thank you, President Evans, for that uh, very kind award and recognition. I, I'll cherish it always, and thank you for that uh, kind of perhaps exaggerated introduction. <laughs> I'm very excited to be here. I mean, I've heard that this graduation was exciting, and it is, and so it should be. You are commencing on something very important today, and I want to congratulate all the graduates for having completed their four years and receiving their degrees. You're to be honored and truly congratulated today. Look, I'm going to tell you some things uh, that are kind of traditional. I'm going to charge you with something. I'm going to give you some advice, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a caution. The charge is like this. America is about the pursuit of happiness and about the idea that everyone has the, inhabits the land of opportunity. And by virtue of your graduation today, you are charged with leading that in the future and preserving it. It is what makes us Americans and that's part of your responsibility. I'm also gonna tell you that uh, you're going to a different place. The world is not quite like academia and it is different and you'll need some things that will serve you. And I'm going to advise you to have commitment. I'm going to advise you to be able to communicate. I'm going to advise you to be curious. Because in the end, curiosity is ascendant. And then finally, I'm going to give you some advice that the time, your time, this time is your time. You may think that you're moving toward the future and the future is in your hands, but I am telling you that the now is in your hands and people are looking at you to determine the future of the United States and they decide whether the United States will be prosperous today based on you right now. So you have an impact on the future, sure, but you have an impact on the now. Your time is actually now. The president gave you a, a formal um, uh, resume. I'm going to give you the people's resume. I'm not from Harvard. I'm from South Troy, New York. This is the kind of place that has steel mills and, and foundry dust on the cars in the morning. I did go to RPI. I trained as an engineer. I worked on cars and space probes. I fought with the American Army in Vietnam, but my first job was that of a high school football coach. I lived in Asia for 11 years and I moved 16 times, and by virtue of my jobs, I've met eminent and distinguished people well beyond my station. But you know, standing here today, I'm kind of nervous. You know, because your history, things that happened in the past always influence the day. You know, I remember the last time I talked to a group like this. Uh, based on my performance that day, when I finished my remarks, the faculty there attending stood en masse and by acclamation awarded me an honorary degree, Master of Anesthesiology. <laughs> apparently, as it was told to me, apparently I sedated the audience <laughs> in what was then record time for that institution. Look, you know, I want to speak about America for a moment. I think it's appropriate because you are inheriting this. Ever think about what makes an American? It's not so simple. We're not Americans because we come from a common origin. People come, people, Americans come from everywhere. We're not Americans because we have a particular religion. All forms of worship are, are seen here. 
Why not even Americans? Because we inhabit a certain geography, because the, the, the outline of the United States has changed as often as the stars have, have been added to the flag and two have been added in my lifetime. We are Americans because we share a common belief. That's what marks us, and it's unique among all nations of the world. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And for pursuit of happiness, read that we have, everyone in America has the right to have a job that keeps their family warm and safe and dry, and they have pride and dignity. You see, America is the land of opportunity. We've said that many times. We've heard that many times as we're growing up. And in fact, it is, but it is what defines us exactly. And I'll tell you, Snap-on does business in 130 countries around the world, and I visit many of them, but I can tell you without equivocation, without qualification, without question, that America is still the the best, the greatest country in the world today. It's not a matter of being great again. It's a matter of we are the greatest country in the world. A couple of statistics on this. We have 50% more paved roads. Seven times more people are lining up to come in this country than any other country. And China, of course, is coming up. They're really coming up. Wow, they're catching us. China will launch, uh, next year, will open 54 new airports. Sounds like a lot, right? 54. Well, if they do that for 25 years, they'll start to get close to what America has. 25 years of 54. So this is the greatest country in the world. And you ask yourself, how did this happen? And here's how it happened. Historians agree on this, whether they're from Harvard, Yale, or other places. And what it is, is we've had brilliant people. We've had people like our leaders in Washington and Lincoln, and people like Thomas Edison and Henry Ford, and, and in modern days, like Steve Jobs and, uh, and uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla. And they have created great ideas, but actually, Tesla wouldn't exist today. Facebook wouldn't exist today. The Ford Motor Company wouldn't exist today if those ideas weren't matched up with the efforts of the many. So America, has prospered and gone to its current level of being great. Now, we have a lot of challenges. We have a lot of difficulties. We have a lot of warts. But we've come to where we are today based on the brilliance of the few, those inventors, those innovators, but also on the efforts of the many, everyday people doing extraordinary things. And all of you in this audience, some of you, may be inventors. Somewhere in this audience, or maybe the next Mark Zuckerberg. But I know that all of you are the leaders of the efforts of the many. And this is a responsibility that you should bear and think about and take seriously. Because that's your role in the future, to guarantee that this is the land of opportunity going forward and that America and Americans remain the greatest country in the world. Americans remain special, and America remains the greatest country in the world. And it's based on your leadership. And you start that today. You take that charge today. Now, I want to tell you also that when you move out into the world, you're moving to a different world. Academia is one thing, but the world you move to, whether you're talking about business or or a nonprofit, or government service, or hospitals, or education. It is different. One thing, for example, do you know that here, probably, if you get 95% on a test, it's an A, right? In business, it's an F. So attention to detail is absolutely important and quite different, and you'll have to adjust yourself to that. But I know you can make the adjustments. I'm familiar with adjustments myself. You know, I, was, uh, I grew up in South Troy. It's kind of the ne'er-do-well section of Troy abutting Russell Sage College. In my time, it was a girls' college, a, a women's college in, in, in Troy, and RPI was a, it's sort of like polar opposite at the top of the hill. And I remember through high school thinking, maybe someday I'll be able to date a Russell Sage girl. Well, I finally went to RPI, and I did date a Russell Sage girl. And I was quite enamored with her, I have to say. She came, she came from a, a, um, a particularly affluent suburb of one of the Hamptons from uh, New York City. 
And I remember one night I was taking her home to her dorm in Russell Sage, walking down, you know, like this, feeling pretty good about myself. And I look in the distance, and she says, oh, I love Russell Sage, but, you know, I'm con we, we at here in this college are confronted by this all the time. And in the distance, there was a guy, big guy, bending over in a trash, uh, in a uh, sort of a trash container, taking things out and putting it into a supermarket counter, uh, cart. So she says, I often feel endangered. We have these characters showing up in front of our, front of our dorm. I, and so we start walking faster and faster. I'm walking faster and faster. I think we're going to get by this guy because he's down in a dumpster, you know? And so we get by there, and we get right to him. And he gets up. Disaster. He gets up, and this is a big guy. And I can hear her gasp and feel her shudder. So I step in front of her, and this guy looks at her, and she shudders again, up and down. Boy, this is getting bad. And then he moves out from behind his cart, and he moves aggressively toward me, and I move out to meet him, and he says, hi, Nick. <laughs> How's your mom and dad? He lived on my block. <laughs> That's a true story, you know? I, I want to point out that she never took my calls again, you know. <laughs> That's true, you know. I, although I did meet someone later, and I've been married for 48 years, so therefore it worked out okay, you know. <laughs> so I'm trying to say that when you make changes, it's going to require you to, to take some bumps in the road, as it did me. Moving from South Troy to RPI wasn't so easy. But look, here's what can help you. You're going to move to areas, and as I said, whether you're in business or, uh, or government service or nonprofits or hospitals or education, you're going to move to a place that's where the, the goals are bigger than yourself. Think about this. When you're in school, whether it's grammar school or high school or here at SVC, I'm sure, the whole organization is focused on trying to make you better. That stops today. Really. Wherever you go, unless you go to graduate school and eventually you'll go out into this world, you're going to be focused on trying to make the organization better, the organizational goals. You're going to have to demonstrate commitment to that, and you will be appreciated for that commitment and your contribution to that collective. And then often it's said that young people change jobs quite a bit, and they do, but I can tell you that commitment to us and focus accrue positively. At Snap-on, the average person when they walk in the door can expect to be there 32 years. My company, 32 years. And in fact, we use that experience to wield again our competition as a great force. So my suggestion is you consider as you go forward that you need commitment. Commitment to collective goals and perhaps recognize that the more you're focused and the longer you're focused on something, the stronger you will be. Secondly, I'd like to talk about communication. You know, the essence of success in the outside world is enlisting other people in your ideas. There's a commercial on TV, you may have seen it. It's a Microsoft commercial for Windows 10, and it's got a young lady who's in medical school, and she says, half of science is convincing people that what you're doing is matters, and so it is. The ability to enlist people is important to you, and it will be a change. Right now, people are paid, or not right now, but when you've been in school, in all your school, people have been paid to read what you write and to listen to what you say. But in the future, you need to get their attention and convince them that what you're doing is worthwhile. You need to enlist them in your ideas, whether they're big ideas like an electric car or small ideas and how to change the way to build a tool. You need to be clear and concise and compelling in your communication, and it takes practice. I urge you to focus on it. And then finally, there's a lot of talk about change. You're going to see change. I say, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. You've been, cha you've been trained to deal with change. 
But you're going to have to know that change is happening. You're going to have to do things about it. And what the be now you can go back to school and get re-educated, but there's something a lot simpler you can do. You can reinvest in yourself, and you can keep asking why. Henry David Thoreau, an 18th century uh, philosopher, said that you can tell more about a person based on the questions they ask than by the answers they give, and so it is. Ask why and why and why and why. Curiosity is ascendant. It will make you, it's the marker, it's a marker of future success. It will make you stronger and stronger and stronger. And then finally, I have a caution. What time is it? It is now your time. Really. You know, people look at the future of America. They think what to do today. They decide what to do today in America, whether to invest, whether to build more factory, whether to create more jobs, based on where they think the future is. And you are the future. They will look at you and say, I have confidence or not in the future based on the leadership of the young people I see. And I have to tell you, there are many who say that the millennia generation is a question. But those people, you know, those people who, who question that haven't spoken to Ryan Stoll of the business, uh, business department here. They haven't uh, met Chelsea Zukowski of the nursing department here. And sure as heck, sure as heck, they haven't, uh, they don't even know about the uh, New England Athletic Conference Defensive Basketball Player of the Year, Damon Carter from Communications. <laughs> you see, they don't necessarily know all of you, and if they did, they would have confidence in the future, but that is your responsibility to convince people that the future is bright, and I believe you can do it. But make no mistake about this, you're going to influence the future, but you are influencing the now. Your time is now. And people are already looking at you and making judgments about our future. So that's my message. This is America, and America is a special place. It's a place where we define ourselves as the people of belief, those who believe in opportunity. This is the land of opportunity, and you are charged by lead, either by innovation or leading the many to maintain that opportunity and keeping Americans and America the greatest country in the world and what it has always been. That's your charge. You are going to a different environment. It's going to be different. You need to pay attention to detail, but you need to be committed. You need to commit to something, a purpose that is greater than yourself, but you will be judged on that, and you need to focus on things because you need to remember that experience will accrue to your benefit, and you will be stronger and stronger because of it. And then you need to remember that change happens. It is the one continuous thing, and the best thing to manage change is to reinvest in yourself, and the easiest way to do that is to keep asking why and why and why. It will make you stronger. And then finally, finally, I charge you to recognize that the bell rings today. This is your time, and the world is watching. You see, See, people say that the future is beyond our grasp, and so it is. But the future is not beyond our control. The future is said by men and women, hearts and hands, enabled by the very things I just talked about. I know you can marshal commitment. Your degree you're receiving today says so. I know you can be compelling in your communications. Your professors say so. And I know you are among those marked by curiosity because your willingness to leave your homes and come to, to Southern Vermont College says so. 
This is your time, and the world is watching. People question the future of the United States, but you are the answer, and I am confident in you, and you know you can see, succeed, and you know it's true. Thank you all for inviting me here, and have a great graduation celebration. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my honor as the Dean of the Faculty to award certificates of higher education to graduates of our College Steps program. The students receiving certificates today had to meet a number of criteria set by the Regional College Steps organization within a two-year time frame, including four semesters of coursework and completion of an internship and participation in many campus activities. I ask President Evans to assist in awarding the College Steps certificates. President Evans. It is my pleasure to report that in the judgment of the Southern Vermont College faculty and within the College Steps program criteria, the following students have satisfactorily fulfilled all requirements to receive their higher education certificates. Dylan Lee Cheney, please come forward. Ekayo Telali Soshoki, please come forward. Congratulations to our College Steps Certificate students. And now the time you have all been waiting for. President Evans and Registrar Hatton, please come forward for the conferring of the degrees. First, we will present the class of baccalaureate and associate degree recipients. Will the baccalaureate and associate degree candidates please stand? Chair Wagner and President Evans, it gives me honor and pleasure to present these candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Associate's Degree, and to report that in the judgment of the faculty, they have satisfactorily fulfilled all requirements for their degrees. Here it is. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Southern Vermont College, I hereby confer upon you, as appropriate, the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, or Associate of Arts, with all the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. This is it. You've got it now, but we've got to hand them to you still. <laughs> please, please be seated. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Associate of Arts degrees please come forward and receive their diplomas? Evan Campbell Smith, Associate's Degree in Interdisciplinary Studies. John Robert Arancio, Bachelor's Degree in Business Administration. Bridget Marie Bolster, Bachelor's Degree in Business Administration, cum laude. Kelsey Elise Carrera, bachelor's degree in business administration, cum laude. Michael Andrew Pierre, bachelor's degree in business administration. 
Ryan Lawrence Stowell, bachelor's degree in business administration, cum laude. Shay Ann Wilson, bachelor's degree in business administration, summa cum laude. Joseph Fernando Garcia, bachelor's degree in business administration and management. Lauren Bliss Grayson, bachelor's degree in business administration and management. Dylan Anthony Johnson, bachelor's degree in business administration and management. Luigi Joseph Magliocca, Bachelor's degree in business administration and management. Elmer Oliveras, bachelor's degree in business administration and management. Nico Sasha Leonard Horwith, bachelor's degree in business administration entrepreneurship. Kimberly Velasquez, bachelor's degree in business administration, healthcare management. Melissa Noel Mascari, bachelor's degree in business administration and sports management. Paige Joyce Vitale, bachelor's degree in business administration and sports management. Lexia Lee Gillette, Bachelor's degree in business administration, sports, recreation, and tourism management, cum laude. Nathaniel David Goldsmith, bachelor's degree in business administration, sports, recreation, tourism management. Devante Lamar Jordan, bachelor's degree in business administration, sports, recreation, and tourism management. Bridget Kane, bachelor's degree in communication. Damon Marquise Carter, bachelor's degree in communication. Tori Kurtzner, bachelor's degree in creative writing, summa cum laude, salutatorian. Tanisha K. Wright, bachelor's degree in creative writing. Michaela Marie Zemaitis, bachelor's degree in creative writing and in English. Alexia Mary Nyman, bachelor's degree in English. Kelsey Lauren Hamister, bachelor's degree in liberal arts. Ambrosine Kelly Ama Agbalor, bachelor's degree in biological sciences. Ariel Elizabeth Coughlin, bachelor's degree in nursing. Amrit Domrit, bachelor's degree in nursing. Nicole Matthews, bachelor's degree in nursing. Andrea Helen Pansecki, bachelor's degree in nursing, magna cum laude. Samantha Marie Scruggs, bachelor's degree in nursing. Shailen K. Uden, bachelor's degree in nursing. Chelsea Lynn Zukowski, bachelor's degree in nursing. Megan E. Amidon, bachelor's degree in radiological sciences. Lucian Borgalt, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences, cum laude. Owen M. Desmarie, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences. Morgan Dodge, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences. Abigail Patrice Durgan, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences, magna cum laude.
Julia Elizabeth Florence, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences, cum laude. Ashley Marie Gordon, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences. Savannah Elizabeth Horde, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences. Caitlin Marie Lapan, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences. Chloe Marie Lange, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences. Megan Rose McSweeney, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences. Megan Ann Ostrobinski, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences. Tommy Outwater, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences. Katherine M. Ryan, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences. Siobhan J. Sparks, bachelor's degree in radiologic sciences, cum laude. Cameron David Bow, bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Mark Richard Brandmeier, bachelor's degree in criminal justice. David Joshua Fry, bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Christiana Rosemary Goldup, bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Nicholas Ryan Hartman, bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Andrew Joseph Kirkman, bachelor's degree in criminal justice, magna cum laude. Rob Alfred Spadafore, bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Zachary Stephen Prosser, bachelor's degree in history and politics. Aaron James Kellogg, Bachelor's degree in human services. Charlene Mary Marte. Bachelor's degree in human services. Martina Tawanda Parks. Bachelor's degree in human services. Savannah Sache Santiago. Bachelor's degree in human services. Bethany Zira, bachelor's degree in human services. Nicholas Diagnos, bachelor's degree in psychology. Cheyenne Daly, bachelor's degree in psychology, magna cum laude. Andrew Christopher Fontana, bachelor's degree in psychology, cum laude. Kayla Anicia Hernandez, bachelor's degree in psychology. Amanda Marie McNeil, bachelor's degree in psychology. Ashley Marie Stringham, bachelor's degree in psychology. Cassie Rachel Walters, bachelor's degree in psychology. Emily Rose White, bachelor's degree in psychology. Hayden Hodge Woolner, bachelor's degree in psychology, cum laude. Benjamin Zvi Wormfeld, bachelor's degree in psychology, magna cum laude. Queenie Laika Garrison, bachelor's degree in history and politics, summa cum laude, valedictorian. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the college community, 
Please join me in congratulating the Southern Vermont College Baccalaureate and Associate Degree Class of 2018. Having now conferred all of the degrees, we now perform the ceremonial tradition that symbolizes the achievement of your respective degrees. Would all of the graduates please stand, and would the valedictorian Queenie Like a Garrison and the salutatorian Tori Kurtzner come forward and face the graduates? Turning the tassels marks the transition from candidate to graduate. I ask the graduates to join the valedictorian and salutatorian as they move their tassels from right to left, the sign of an earned degree. Congratulations to you all. Please be seated. And now, to deliver the farewell remarks to the graduates on behalf of the faculty, please welcome Professor Linda Sinkowicz. Good afternoon. I'm going to make this short and sweet since I know how many of you are waiting to hug your graduates and celebrate this emo amazing moment in their lives. And that's what I'd like to talk about today, milestones. When I was asked to deliver the faculty remarks this year, I began to reflect on my years at Southern Vermont College, all 18 of them. 18, one of the milestones in a person's life. Suddenly, you become legally responsible for your actions. Scary thought. <laughs> Big changes when a person turns 18. For some of you, it's when you entered the workforce. Others enlisted in the military. Some of you may have started at other colleges before transferring to SVC. And still more of you walked onto our campus for the first time. Take a moment and think back to your 18th birthday. Who were you then? How have the events of your life helped you to become the person you are now? How did you mark the occasion of your 18th birthday? What did you do to recognize that milestone? The purpose of a milestone is to provide a reference point along a road. Milestones are used, quote, to reassure travelers that the proper path is being followed and to indicate either distance traveled or the remaining distance to a destination, end quote. I love that idea, that the milestones in our own lives can help us to see the distance we've come, the distance we have to our next goal, to give us the opportunity to stop and look around at the path we are on to be sure it's the right one for us. While you were here, many of your milestones were celebrated together. The opening convocation welcomed you that first year. Beginning and ending the semester cycle, progressing toward your degrees, you were able to follow paths with communal milestones, celebrating victories and recovering from the occasional stumbles along the road. And here you arrive today for this milestone, earning your degree, this celebration is communal as well, and we all get together to make sure you celebrate it properly and mark this high achievement. But it's up to you to pause and look at the distance you've come 
to stop and look around at the path you are on and to know that from here forward, you'll be looking for your own milestones on your own path. And when you pass them, big or small, be sure to pause long enough to notice the milestone. Everyone has their own, new jobs, graduate school, marriage, children, opening businesses, changing cities, states, countries, publishing research or books, learning to fly fish, drive a motorcycle, get a dog or three or four. There are so many moments, so many milestones that it's easy to pass by without noticing any but the very biggest. And while it's wonderful to celebrate the big ones, like today, don't forget the little ones because each one signals change. Each one marks a length of the journey. Each one reassures you of the direction of your path. The last four years have flown by and you'll likely find that it just goes faster and faster with each passing year. Just ask your parents. Don't forget to notice your milestones. Pause a moment when you do, if for nothing else than to reassure you, the traveler, that the proper path is being followed. Take time to see how far you've come. And now, since I cannot let anyone go without quoting one of my favorite writers, let me share a stanza from one of Tolkien's walking songs. The road goes ever on and on, down from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road has gone, and I must follow if I can. Pursuing it with eager feet, until it joins some larger way, where many paths and errands meet. And whither then? I cannot say. On behalf of the faculty, I want to thank you for allowing us to walk with you on this leg of your journey. It's been an honor. We wish you joy as you continue toward your next milestone and the next and the next. May you all follow your paths, celebrate your milestones, and enjoy your journey forward. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Professor Sinkowicz. As we approach the end of our 91st commencement, I want to thank everyone who helped make this event happen so seamlessly. A special thank you to those working behind the scenes, the technicians who helped us with today's production, the hardworking SVC facilities crew who keep this campus looking beautiful, and campus safety who do so much to keep our students safe. I thank our faculty and staff who together enable student success. I thank our trustees for their time and dedication to this wonderful institution. And I thank our honored guest, Mr. Pinchuk, and all of our families and friends who shared in this special day with us. As we prepare to close the ceremonies, I ask that the audience remain at their seats until the platform party faculty and the graduates have processed out of the tent. I hope that you will all please join us for refreshments at the Everett Mansion following the ceremony. Class of 2018, on behalf of the Southern Vermont College Board of Trustees, President Evans and our faculty and staff, we wish you every success in your next steps in life. As now official members of the SVC Alumni Association, please remember this special place and special time in your life and do stay in touch. Audience, please join us once again in congratulating all of the graduates. As board chair, I declare the 91st commencement ceremony for Southern Vermont College officially closed. Thank you.